hello, hello. Hey, everybody. How are we doing today? Hello, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Welcome to my very messy studio. Um, glad for all of you to be joining us today. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, uh, depending where you're joining from. Uh, joining us from today. So what are we going to do today? Um, well, we're going to be uh, checking out Helix. I'm going to just share my screen here. Um, what I thought would be cool is just going over, you know, a basic metal tone, um, you know, kind of my approach to a metal tone. Uh, you know, this is just a placeholder for, you know, just something for us to talk shop about. Um, you know, if you guys have any questions pertaining to Helix, PodGo, Catalyst, whatever it may be, let us know what's up. Chris Payer, what's up, brother? Good to have you in the house. Um, Chris is our latest addition to the product specialist team. Um, uh, you know, to our uh, beautiful neighbors in Canada. So I'm um, glad to have you aboard, Chris. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm just uh, seeing the comments as they come in. Ross ba Ross Bailey, great to have you, man. Haven't seen you in a while. Um, Orlando, uh, George, Andrew, uh, Leo. Hello, guys. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, and yeah, so like I said, I'm just going to kind of build a tone from scratch here, kind of show you what's up. And, um, you know, when, when it comes to doing metal tones and just heavy sounds in general, you know, sometimes we can get, you know, with these tones, we can get a little muffled in the mix and, um, some really simple things can, you know, help us kind of punch through the mix even better. And, you know, with me, I love low end. I love lots of bass. I love, you know, just feeling my, you know, my shirt ripple when I hit a low E or an A chord, right? So the, th the caveat with that is, you know, a lot of boominess, a lot of low end can, um, you know, kind of, you know, wash you out, but, you know, you kind of get hidden behind the bass player, right? So um, some simple things, you know, really just some uh, low cut on your cabinet can really help out with that. But let's have some fun. I'm going to build a tone from scratch here, and then I'll send you guys a link for the custom tone thing that I put together. Um, I will be using an impulse response today. Um, you know, I love using IRs. You know, it's just less work for me. Uh, you know, when building tones, and so as uh, you know, as we go about this and start building stuff, feel free to raise your hand, ask a question, and myself or any of the other product specialists can uh, chime in and let you know what's up. And um, I will do my best uh, with uh, the playing over here. The coffee hasn't kicked in yet, but um, we'll see how this goes. Taking a look at the comments before we get started. Um, so uh, we got a Moore's a Barbershop here. What is the best way to hook up my Helix Mic Power Cab 112 Plus? I used the Line 6 cord, but it sounded thin. Well, uh, well there, I'm you know sorry to hear about that. Uh, you know, honestly, when you think about it, using the Line 6 link to your Power Cab, um, you know, that... It's, it, it's not robbing you of anything. Um, if anything, it's kind of getting rid of that... Um, analog to digital, you know, that ADA conversion thing happen in there, right? Because it's a digital cable. Um, you know, make sure you're using an AES-EBU cable as well. Um, it sounds like you, you know, Line 6 cord, I'm assuming you, you know, probably purchased a Line 6 link cable through us. Um, but there isn't any reason why that would make your overall sound sound thin at all. Um, you know, but just, you know, keep in mind, every time you plug into a power cab or a speaker, whatever it may be, Every speaker is going to have its own sound and its own tone, so you may have to tweak your preset a bit. Um, I know that wasn't, you know, that may not help you a whole bunch there, but maybe some tweaking with your sound. Again, you know, when it comes to a concern like that, um, you know, when I can't hear the sound and experience it myself, it's hard to pinpoint what can make your sound um, sound a little thinner. But, you know, just food for thought there. Tony Campanovo in the house. Um, great to have you aboard, brother. Great to see you. Um, Duke, no, you did not miss anything. We just got it started. Hello, 112 mean a 112 cabinet. 112 plus, Leo, yes, uh, that means a 112 cabinet. Um, the 112 plus uh, Line 6 power cab. So, uh, let's just kind of dive in it. Um, I was having some weird audio uh, not so, not really issues, but some, just some weirdness with uh, my my audio sends into OBS where um, the audio was kind of quiet. So bear with me on that. Um, you know, we'll we'll try to make it happen. So the amp I'm going to start off with today, um, I'm just going to go straight to the amp, and I'm going to go to the Cali 
for lead. This is based off of the uh, off the lead channel of a Mesa Boogie Mark IV, and uh, you know this amp is set up pretty well. I'm not going to change much about it. I may, you know, raise the uh, lead drive a bit. I'm going to keep the EQ stack exactly where it is. And what's really cool about this amp is how it has the built-in EQ, right? And if you notice, we're not adding anything here. And you know, this is the model default. I didn't adjust anything here. Um, and you notice 750 hertz, which is you know smack dab in the mid range. Um, you know, is turned down nearly three decibels. So. I don't think we'll have to really adjust much with the uh, EQ, but um, you know, so right out of the right out of the gate, not changing much. I'm, I may adjust the channel volume depending on what I'm doing here, and uh, you know, all I did was raise the lead drive. Um, so now let's add a cabinet, and you'll notice I'm working on path two. And first, let's connect path one to path two. And what I like to do here is I kind of, you know, th this is just my style um, when I build tones. I kind of like to split my tone up into two parts because I'm able to just continuously add to my sound. Um, you know, if we're not doing anything elaborate, you know, with two, with dual amps or, you know, three or four different amps, if we're not doing anything crazy like that, um, then this is what I'll, th this is kind of like my standard workflow. Because if I want to add pitch shift or a couple reverbs and delays and whatnot, you know, you kind of, divide and conquer with the DSP, right? So this is how we're how I'm going to build this tone today and if you download the um, if you download the custom tone, you will be able to uh, you know you'll, you'll be able to see what's going on here. I'm um, taking a quick look at the chats. So it looks like we got a bunch coming in. Uh, DSP <laughs> Sheldon. <laughs> uh, let's see. Thanks. Since this means 112, what about trying with more cabinets like a 412, for example? Leo, yeah, you definitely. Um, you know, if you want to try your Helix with a traditional 412 cabinet you know, by all means, um, it, it, it should sound great. Um, I know uh, brands like Seymour Duncan and even Mission Engineering, they uh, have power amps to, you know, push a modeler through, you know, a traditional 412 cab, so you could definitely do that. All right, so building this, uh, building some tones here, I'm gonna go to an impulse response. Um, I'm going to choose a 1024, because that's going to use half the data as a 2048, hence, um, you know, hence the number, right? Half, you know, half of 2048. And this way I could start adding more stuff. And keep in mind, if you're using a 1024 IR, I could always add another 1024 IR, and I could use two, but I'm not doing that today. Um, we'll just be using one to, um, one IR today. And the IR I'm going to be using, let's see if we could uh, see this. I'm actually pulling one. This is straight off of our marketplace. Um, the LRS, Live Ready Sound. Um, JP Boogeyman, um, if you could, uh, you know, facetiously under, you know, get who that is. JP, John Petrucci. Now, although we're not doing any Dream Theater stuff today, I just personally really, really like uh, this IR set. And if we go down here, I have a you could tell that you know I've had my time going through all of these and you know there's different microphones different placements and stuff but the one that you know I really like is this uh, Nige right here Nige however you want to pronounce it the Stefano sounds pretty good as well but um, you know these cabinets were you know these impulse responses were designed to get that kind of prog rock John Petrucci kind of sound um, again we're not really doing a whole lot of that today but um, you know when when I build some metal you know metal tones for myself, this is you know these are the cabinets I like to use. Um, they're a lot of fun. Um, all right, so uh, I wanted to see this on Sheldon. I wanted to see this on the Stomps DSP. Oh dear. Oh, we could do it. Um, I <laughs> eight blocks. I'm sure we could do it. Um, we'll see how many blocks I end up with uh, today. Um, let's see, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm using only one extra block than what we could on a. Uh, on a stomp, but we, we could do this on a stomp. Um, I'm pretty pretty damn sure. Um, so let's see here. Um, let's see the kind of sound we got and uh, let me know how the levels are. All right, so as you can tell, it's it, very muddy. Very quiet. Let's crank this up a bit in the channel volume. So we have a pretty muddy sound here already. And so to kind of lighten it up a bit, let's add a overdrive pedal. 
And so for this overdrive, I will be using um, one of my favorites, the Minotaur. So we're gonna go over to the distortion, Minotaur, and um, I'm not really gonna change much, maybe except the tone. I'll bring that down to three, five. And uh, you know, we'll just bring the gain down to about four, leave everything else where it's at. And this could, you know, this should kind of tighten our sound up a bit. Sounds like it's clipping badly. Huge digital noise on my inside. Sounds like a ring mod almost. Sounds issues here as well. All right, guys. Told you. Told you I was having some sound issues. So let's do this. Let me turn this down. I just need a. Um, I need to get a mixer. I think have a uh, just have a better sound, a uh, better setup here going on. All right, advanced audio properties. Let's turn the gain down. All right, y'all. Let's hear all this. Is that better, guys? I, I have a little, I have probably like a 15 second delay from uh, your comments. So I may be uh, better. So it looks from the comments that we sound better. Okay, tone sounds great now. Thanks, Tony. Thank you guys. Much appreciated on helping me out with that. Um, again, the, uh, the beauty and the curse of live streaming. Um, so, all right, let's get on to it. So as we can see, the tone now is getting better. Um, if we're having any like, sorts of weird digital you know, sounds, um, you know, going over this, my apologies, but hey, what's great? You'll be able to have this tone for yourself and you'll be able to have a lot of fun with it. Um, so let's go on over. So what I love to do or need to do really with the tone like this is I need to take out some of the low end. And the last thing I like adding to any tone is, a, uh, is an EQ. I only add EQ if I need to take something away. Thankfully in the stock cabs and in the IRs we have this low cut. So right now, we have a lot of low end, a lot of boominess. So if I want, I can cut out about, I'm fine, you know, I think the sweet spot for my sound right here would be about 55 hertz. You see, if I wanted to be kind of extreme and go all the way to, you know, about 90, just so we can hear what's happening. So for the kind of sound I'm going for right now, that's a pretty decent, you know, cut to the lows. Um, if I was layering guitars, I would honestly probably turn the gain down a bit and leave the low cut, you know, pretty high, around 80 to 100 hertz. Again, guys, you know, I'm going through, you know, some Yamaha studio monitors right here. Um, some T7s, I believe. Um, you know, this will change depending on the cabinet you're using and depending, you know, on the front of house. So, you know, one number isn't just, you know, one setting here isn't just a one for all, right? So keep that in mind. This setting will definitely change, but I'm pretty sure on your end, you can already hear a difference. So I'm going to keep it around 75. You could hear how that how that low end has gotten a lot tighter. You know, for sure. Whoa, guys. We are getting some, uh... <laughs> I don't know if you, uh, I'm going to block this user. I don't know if you guys are seeing this on the YouTube side of things, but we're getting some crazy <laughs> spam I've never seen before. <laughs> All right, I just blocked them. All right, I don't know if you YouTube guys saw that, but that was pretty funny. 
felt like an old school chat room from when I was like 13. Um, all right, so all right, we're, we're getting somewhere as you can see. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop the volume just a little bit here because the next thing I'm gonna add is going to raise the volume. And I know, uh, yeah, yeah, Michael, Michael Gibson saw that. Yeah, definitely, that was funny. Um, all right, so Tony here can definitely contest. Tony Campanovo, who's in the chat, he could contest that this just butters up any tone you're using. If you're using the cleanest of cleans or the heaviest of heavies, Adding this um, studio compressor just it, it 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 just puts a layer over your sound that you know it just brings out all the goodness and that would be the LA2A studio compressor. Now the peak reduction is set kind of high and so what's going to happen is as I play it's going to start to compress a lot of those lows. So now you can kind of hear that compression. And so I'm gonna bring the uh, volume up a bit. Let me know if I'm clipping or sounding, you know, out of sorts here, guys. I'll, so answer some questions here. Leo, the amp we are using is the Cali 4 Lead. Uh, this is based off a Mesa Boogie Mark IV. And um, everything, all the goodness about that amp is here in this amp model that we're using today. Um, you know, honestly, if, if anything, I'd, I'm probably going to raise the ripple a bit and then turn the bias excursion down. If you want the low end of your amps to sound nice and tight, guys, turn the bias excursion down. That's a characteristic of uh, the output transformer on um, the ripple right here as well will definitely, uh, you know, just give you some nuances. Um, we call these feel controls. You're gonna feel the difference and hear a little bit of the difference, but you're really gonna feel it. Um, you know, but that bias X, man, um, you know, crank that down a bit and that's gonna even tighten up our low end some more. And so this LA-2A, so here's without. Here's with. So other than the volume jumping up a bit, you'll notice that it, it just kind of warms up the sound and just brings out all the goodness. So we're getting some compression that, you know, more compression than I'd like. So I found for this kind of tone, the sweet spot, um, you know, after the amp here, I'm gonna crank this down to about 5.4. And then we'll leave the gain where it's at. Now the emphasis, this is kind of like, you know, what f how this uh, compressor works. This is what frequency it's going to start to compress. And so I kind of like to leave it around the middle, around six here. So now you can hear less peak reduction, we're a lot louder. So now I can turn the channel volume down. just playing some random metal stuff here. So as you can tell, we're starting to get a, a pretty, you know, buttery sound here, as you would say. Um, hi, Nick suggests some uh, uh, tips how to get a metal tone in Italy using Helix in general. You know, kind of what we're doing right here um, should work for your telly. Of, of course, it's a telly, right? So it all depends what pickups you're using. Are, are you using a single coil? Are you using a double stack single coil? So, uh, you know, a tiny humbucker. Um, you know, I would just kind of roll with something like this because this is a pretty heavy sound. But, you know, take a look at the EQing. You know, if you're hearing something you don't like and how do you find that frequency you don't like? You raise the EQ. You know, if, if you're kind of new with the whole EQ thing, start just raising, you know, s frequencies until you f hear something that you're like, you know what, I'm not a fan of that, and kind of lower it, you know, a 0.5 to, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't start any more than a negative three decibels on removing a, uh, uh, on removing a frequency. As we can see here in the default, we got a 0 0.9, a negative 29 for the 750 hertz, and a negative 1.3. Um, in the 2200 here, and that's you know pretty high. That's a high frequency up there. Find what you're not 
happy with and just kind of remove that out of the equation. Um, the last thing you want to do is, you know, oh, there's a lot of low end. Let's bring up some highs to equal that out. You know, it, you're just going to end up, you know, it, you know, I don't want to say, you know, never say never, right? You know, anything, you know, could work in the eye of the beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? But I say, you know, rule of thumb, take away what you don't want. And um, you should be on, you know, on the road to success if you just kind of, you know, go at that, you know, it, w with that kind of nature, right? So let's see here. Well, my screen just blew up on me. The compress the lower sound. It's pumping a little on that comp setting. Might be in the transformer to stream though. Things I've never used here have been much better. Um, I think this video will be saved on our Facebook. I forget how it works on YouTube. Um, maybe Tony could let us know. How do you make the low end less boggy um, or muffled? So great, um, you know, great observation there. So s since we're using this LA two way, we're kind of, you know, bolstering all the frequencies here. And so we can move this emphasis down a bit um, so we don't get, you know, as much of those low end frequencies. But where I would start is this low cut. You know, I would start at the cabinet. You know, look at our look at our amp right here. We're at three, um, you know, 30 percent for our bass. So it's not really coming a whole lot from this amp. It's not like I'm just, you know, boosting the low end. But I will say amps of this nature and higher gain amps can be very boomy. So what I would do is I would go straight to the low cut and I'd turn that down. So we've been at 75 through this journey. Well, how does it sound at 100? Now let's hear it with the low cut untouched. very, very muddy. But then once we go up, you know, at least 40 hertz, start there and work your way up. Here's 100 again. You know, and I'm doing drop D and standard tuning here. So there's lots of opportunity for some boominess. And I feel that that really fixed it. Um, what do you guys think on that? Um, so much better from Ur from Orlando said there. Uh, how do you make the low end less foggy? All right, um, Jesus, uh, you know that's where I would definitely start. And if you're hearing, you know, if you start removing low cut and there's still boomy this boominess there, yet you you know are kind of losing some life of your sound. You know, if you have to go over a hundred or over 120 hertz on the low end, you may want to bring an EQ into the mix, you know, like this amp here, we have an EQ already, but if you were to add a, t you know, a 10 band graphic EQ or even the Cali graphic EQ, you can remove these frequencies, everything from 750 and below, you're going to find those mids and low mid frequencies and the low mid frequencies, especially as well, can make your heavy tone sound boomy. And so Again, just bring up an EQ after the cab, you know, don't put it before unless, you know, you have a really, you know, j you know, cause think about, think about where you're putting that EQ. Is your guitar causing a lot of the low end or is it the amp and cab combination you're using? You know, so I tend to always place an EQ at the end, um, you know, but of course when you use things like an LA-2A at the end of your signal chain, you're definitely going to, you know, bolster, you know, you're going to magnify all the, all the, uh, you know, all the frequencies that are there. So other than that, guys, this is the bare bones to like a metal tone that I put together um, to kind of make it pretty. I would probably go over, you know, to a stereo, uh, you know, plate uh, reverb here for some, you know, solos and I could turn that off. And then right here, I would probably just add a, a dynamic room, right? Um, probably turn the mix down a little bit and I could even bring the decay down a bit. And this could, you know, give us that sound of an amp in, you know, in the studio. That's all mic'd up. And whenever you split, you're going to bring up um, the volume as well. And so you can't even really hear that because it's so quiet. If I were to bring it up a bit to 35, you know, even the pre-delay.
pretty cool stuff there. So other than that, we could always add a uh, you know a, a, a dynamic like a, del a deluxe comp in the front for some solo stuff if you just really want your solos to pop. And so we can have all we could have have fun all day adding stuff to this. But what I want to do before I answer your guys' questions um, is share this custom tone link right here. This will give you act. This will this is the link to the tone we worked on today, guys. Um, you know, there's some more stuff there. I, I, you know, fixed some snapshots so you can have like a rhythm and a lead thing going on. Um, it's set up just like this, so you can you can go on the marketplace, grab those IRs, and plug them in. If you don't want to mess around with IRs, feel free to bring up a cabinet and use what we talked about today in regards to cutting the lows. If you're if you're hearing a lot of highs you don't like, you could even cut those as well. But I was using the LRS Nige, um, the JP Boogeyman. Again, this is how it looks on our marketplace, um, just for you to you know take a quick look at. But really, any IR, any cab will do just fine. Like I said, I just like using IRs because it's less work for me to do. And you know, we built a pretty good sounding metal tone, you know, in just you know about 15, 20 minutes here. So let's take a look at what we have um, in the chat here um, so I could answer these and you know again feel free to copy what we're seeing on the screen so you can get this tone for yourself. Um, just going down here, um, it's pumping a little on that comp setting, might be the tra transfer to stream though. Uh, Nigel, very much so, that could be it. Um, as you know, uh, the compression that we get when we do live streams and even on YouTube, you know, even the videos they have, um, you know, there's a uh, there's a certain threshold, a certain uh, volume you want to be pushing at so you don't get compressed when you're uploading videos and even streaming. So there's probably some weird artifacts there. But please, Nigel, download the tone. Let let me you know. Let us know what you think and um, you know experience it for yourself as well. But thank you so much for being a part of the stream today. Uh, we appreciate you. Um, Leo, let's see what we have here. Thanks, I've never used Helix, so I'm not familiar with the signal chain. So why is the compressor after the IR? Um, well, Leo, that's a great observation. Um, you know, as a guitar player, we're used to having a pedal board where all of our effects, um, you know, or most of our effects are in front of uh, our amplifier. Now, when you think of the LA-2A studio compressor, this is actually a rack mount um, studio compressor. It's been around you know, longer than I've been alive and probably most of us here in the chat. Um, it's a very old classic compressor that after an amp was mic'd in the studio, it would get sent to the studio compressor and not just a guitar, um, a guitar amp. Um, this, they use this compressor for vocals, drums, really anything. It's a very popular compressor. Um, you know, this was even kind of the uh, secret juice that Eddie Van Halen used to get his sound um, in the studio. Uh, and if you've ever seen us do some EVH tones on here, um, I'll put that in front of the amp, um, in front of a Marshall or a you know a, a Brit a Brit Plexi Bright model that we have, and it just cooks. It sounds really good. But that's why Leo, you're seeing this compressor after the amp, um, because I'm using this compressor as it was originally designed to be used, and um, you know, and that's to send. Uh, whatever you're working with, guitar, vocals, drums, whatever, you're sending to this compressor. So that's why we're seeing it after um, the, the cab here. So let me move some stuff around here. Um, move this down here. Um, what I got to do is, because I had to free up a, um, a built-in retina display. There it is. I had to free up a... Uh, whatchamacallit, I had to free up a uh, USB port so we can do what we're doing today. So my laptop is going to die, but we're good now. We are plugged in. And um, let me just do, 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 do some quick magic here. And there we are. So that's why, uh, Leo, we saw that compressor um, where it was. So great question, great observation. As you can see, Leo, you know, with the he with Helix, you know, it the world's your oyster, right? You could build whatever you want, put whatever you want, where you want it to go. And, um, and it just works how it does in the real world. Um, so let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, how do I make the low end less spot? Okay, hey Zeus, we covered that. Michael Gibson, do you recommend using the tilt EQ as well? Yeah, that works. Um, you know, it's really, there's many EQs to choose from. It all depends on, you know, using the right one for your needs. 
Um, so if you can get what if you can get a final result or the end result is what you want using the tilt EQ, definitely do so. Um, taking a quick look at the tilt EQ, um, it's a you know I, I like how it how it works. You know you could just kind of go and maybe it's a little brighter or uh, maybe it's a little darker and then you could choose that center frequency. It's a lot of fun. Sometimes I've seen tones where there's a standard EQ, you know, after the amp and then the tilt EQ before the amp. Um, you know, it's just a matter of what tool is going to work best for you. So um, do I recommend using it? Of course. If it can get you the final result you're looking for, definitely use it. You don't need an EQ with you know 10 bands if you don't if you don't need it then you know don't feel like you know you got to choose that the tilt is great and so is the simple eq for those of us who just need a little boost or a little drop and so on and so forth and we also have those low and high cuts just like what we see you know in our cabinet blocks you have the low and the high cuts so if that's all you need is to just kind of start removing some hurts you know there you go and there you have it so great um, so moving on from here, uh, what do we got here? Oops, sorry, Michael, didn't mean to click on you. Better plug in your MacBook, thank you. <laughs> Exploring IRs is definitely worth it. I like Ownhammer, um, definitely, I agree. Ownhammer, um, you know, makes amazing IRs. Really, everyone that's on our marketplace makes wonderful and beautiful IRs. It's just a matter of, you know, getting through them and finding ones you like, right? But um, for this metal stuff, that LRS, that Live Ready Sound really nails it. But again, gotta, you know, gotta give credit where credit is due. Own Hammer is the man. He definitely knows what he's doing. Not a fan of the IRs. Stock cabs are just fine for me. I love it. Beautiful to hear. Glad that you're using the stock cabs. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, just because IRs exist doesn't mean you need to use them and vice versa, but gr glad to hear the stock cabs are working for you. Um, thank you again for joining us today. Hmm, stock cabs are okay. With enough tweaking, you can get a decent. Does active or passive pickups change? Uh, let's see here, Asus. Does active or passive pickups change the lineup of levels? It definitely can. Um, you know, and that's why you can, you know, pad your input as well and stuff like that, you know. Keep in mind, just sim just because Helix is digital doesn't mean you could just plug whatever you want in it, and it's just always going to sound the same. Every guitar you use, it sounds different. And you know, and, and up at headquarters, you know, when we're doing tone reviews, tone councils, and stuff, we like to have a group in there with all different guitars, all different manufacturers, different pickups, and everything, because every single guitar sounds completely different, and that's why we do it. You know, we need to ensure. You know, this tone sounds great with this guitar. Oh, but it sounds thin on that guitar. Why is that? Is it the pickups? Is it the this? So on and so forth. So it definitely can adjust or, you know, change your levels or, you know, change your starting off point on where you're at. Michael Gibson, thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for coming in today and taking the time out of your day to uh, join us on this uh, on this fun live stream we're doing. Yeah, um, yeah, it can change impedance for inputs, definitely, um, you know, and thankfully here, you know, in the uh, input block, you can change um, that impedance as well. I always keep it on uh, auto, um, you know, but hey, if you want, if you want to hear all that squishiness and every single dynamic from your guitar, you could always crank that up to one ohm, but um, it definitely can. Thank you, Memory Man, much appreciated for you and your knowledge. Um, so what difference does the EQ make before or after the amp Orlando? Well, just think of it, you know, it, it, whatever is connected to the next thing, you know. Um, so if I have an EQ before the amp, then that means everything before that EQ is going to be affected by the settings of that EQ. So seeing an EQ before the amp, well, what I'm doing, looking here, I have my guitar input and then, you know, we'll just get rid of this guy. I have my guitar input, my distortion, and then the EQ. So what that means is I'm EQing my distort, my signal through the distortion. So what you're doing is you're actually equalizing and changing um, the frequencies, adjusting the frequencies of your signal going through that distortion pedal before it hits your amp. When we see an EQ after the amp, what you're doing is you're seeing, or what you're doing is you're adjusting the frequencies after the cabinet. Now, you may see, you know, it, here, I could get rid of this guy here and then I could bring the EQ down. So you may see tones where some, some people like 
putting stuff in between amp and cab. I personally am not a fan of that, but when you have an EQ after the cabinet, now what I'm doing is I'm sculpting the, you know, the frequencies of my amp and cab and anything before it. So just think about wherever you place a block and same goes in the traditional world, wherever you place an effect or a block, you are going to affect everything before it. So everything before your EQ will be equalized before it hits the next thing in line. So, you know, if your guitar and distortion and whatever else sounds good, but maybe you're getting a little boominess because you're, you're working with a really heavy sounding amp that has a lot to offer, well, that's where I'm going to put the EQ is after the, after the cabinet so I can adjust that overall sound I have. But if I put it before the amp in the cab, which is really boomy in itself, I'm not going to be doing myself any good. I'm just going to be robbing my overall tone from, you know, all this goodness coming from my guitar and from the EQ uh, and from the distortion, let's say, you know, and whatever else you have in front of it. Great question, Orlando. Much appreciated to have you in and, um, you know, joining us today. So thank you, Orlando. And uh, finally, um, Duke uh, right here. I get good results combining IRs and the black back stock. I've had a lot of fun doing that as well, kind of getting the best of both worlds here, right? Very cool, very cool. Well, guys, um, we're about a couple minutes over our time here, but um, I just wanted to say thank you for joining me. It's been um, a pleasure, and you guys have been very, uh, you know, very active, and um, you know, it, it's 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 been great, uh, you know, helping you all out. And um, thank you again. We had Tony, Chris. Ross, um, product specialist from around the world, in with us today. So it was a good hang. So thank you guys so much for joining. Um, had a lot of fun. So um, you all are much appreciated. We appreciate you all. I hope you were able to find uh, the tone here if you if you were interested. If you did not get a chance to copy this down, just go on Align6.com, look at the custom tone, and just type in N Bell. My name, Nick Bell. If you look N Bell, you'll find that and you'll be good to go. Keep up the great work and add Mesa Boogie Mark II C+. Oh, I know. I've been wanting that amp for so long, Michael. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you are heard. Trust me, my friend. Uh, but other than that, guys, if you liked what we were doing today, um, you know, this was one to many. But if you would like a one-on-one -on -one with myself, Chris, Ross, Tony, um, check us out. That ain't it, but check us out here. Um, Helix Skype lessons, but hey, we'll do it on Zoom or whatever, you know, whatever works best for you. Check out us, check us out at line6.com forward slash events where we can do a one on one with you 45 minutes completely free. And uh, we can talk a shop on whatever you, you know, have questions on Pod Go, Catalyst, Metallurgy, um, Helix, whatever it may be. Um, let us know what's up and um, we'll have a lot of fun doing that. Um, you know, today I was using my Pacifica 611 and I was going wireless with the, uh, you know, where are we at with my G10 T2 here. So very easy to get some good sounds and had a lot of fun. What I'm going to do guys is I'm just going to keep this screen up for you. So, uh, you all can copy that down and hopefully we'll see you, um, you know, in a lesson, but other than that guys, thank you so much. And, uh, we will see you at the next stream. It was uh, my pleasure. Uh, be safe, be well, and we'll see you next time.